Hi everybody, it's June here, June Angel Pews. I have got to you at long last on this beautiful sunny day. It's been quite cold the last few last few weeks really. Um, but it suddenly turned into summer again. So whether it's going to be an uh, Indian Indian summer, I think they call it. Anyway, so I've come to you at long last. Oh, I meant to put my wings on. Um, with the things I wanted to show you that I had um, completed or oh, worked on and did all sorts of who's whys and wherefores with felting. Um, the actual first thing um, that I, I learnt and uh, quickly got into it but quickly got out of it again because it's so much like hard work and that was simply uh, making a sheet of felt um, and that was simply from if I can just pick this up a minute this is just a, a colour that I happen to have in front of me pieces like this um, laid between at the base was um do you remember the uh, what they're called huh. table mats that were um they looked like canes sewn together and they rolled up quite well i think they were indian or Chinese I'm not sure um, but there was a large sheet of that then um, a big bath towel and polythene and I won't go on because I can't remember um, you'll find all this sort of thing on YouTube just put felt making in and it'll help open a whole new world to you um, and certainly, you know, how to do this basic uh, felting. Okay, so, um, let me just tell you here and now, the felting that you get is often called roving. And if you pull it sort of strongly, you know, it will never move, really. You've got to be really gentle with it and tease it out you see and this is coming out nice and thin etc so those were crisscrossed on the this sort of sandwich of bits and bobs that I've told you about and you need to go and have a look at and then the whole thing was rolled up and you you know sort of backwards and forwards backwards and forwards and I very soon learnt that my arms, my wrists, my hands, and this is years ago when I was not too bad, um, I couldn't cope with it. Oh, my shoulders and my neck, it's so much like hard work. So I decided if I was going to do anything, it was going to be, you know, on a very, very small scale. So as I was picking that, um, that, We'll call it wool. It isn't, but um, we'll call it wool. As I was picking that out, this um, sweater in front of you um, shows you how thin that is. It's like... Um, I've got a scarf. I'll show you in a minute. It's very, very... Well, the scarf certainly is like a spider's web. And this is very, very... Uh, fine. Can you see that? So this is quite an old um, sweater now. Um, I can't think where I got it from. It was ready-made, sorry I didn't do this. It was ready-made, I just happened to pick it up and I thought uh, well that will be a good example to show when I do any um, show and tells. Um, it was a second-hand item, it was from a charity shop 
And that really sort of got me going. I was absolutely enthralled with, you know, what effects you could have. I mean, these, this has got beading as well, so it can be incorporated into anything. And I mean anything, from ATC cards, I've had some beautiful ATC cards that have been felted, right up to making clothes out of the, the thick felt or could be thick, it could be thin, that I told you about. Um, so that, let me take that away and show you if I can come across it. I'm going to be here, there and everywhere, so I'm afraid um, you'll have to forgive me if I sort of go from one thing to another. Let me show you the scar that is done. I love this. Oops, it's a long scarf. This took an awful lot, an awful lot of doing. Sorry. So here you find those uh, beautiful pieces of the roving wool that have been, in this case, case felted onto um, the crinkly, you see that crinkly fabric, um, and then into other colours. So you've got that effect and as you can see, you can see right through that. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous um, scarf that I can tell you now is as warm as warm as you have ever witnessed. <laughs> you know it's you don't need a big big thick scarf you really don't because it's the wool. Um, I, I just love it it's gorgeous. So that's sort of the extreme that you can do it took forever um, did it at a work um, class years ago um, I have actually worn that um, sort of late in summer when the nights are getting a bit cool and that, that's good. And that was um, completed by this sort of thing. Um, okay, no, let, sorry, before I sort of go on about that, let me say that today we use... Um, the actual felting sewing machines, I'd call it that because it's, you know, it's a felting machine, but it looks like a sewing machine. I've got one, but I haven't bought it out because it's too heavy. Um, but if you don't want to invest in that sort of thing, this is what you would, you would use. This is specially designed for felting. It's made by Clover, which tend to have the market in the um, in the Felton arena. You've seen that one before, haven't you? But I bet you've not seen this. Sorry, an aside. Can you see? It's um, you know me. I get my things from China. It costs one pound eight pence <laughs> with uh, free postage. Oops, sorry. And I, I think. It, they were originally worn by uh, the Indian ladies at the weddings, etc. Sorry, let me just put that down. Oh, I can't get hold of it. Can you see? And that's the tiny ring that slips. And they've got all shapes. I mean, this is for my longish nails. But they've got the square... People like you, Johnny. Hi. Um, and they've got the round shape. But I went for the... I think they're fabulous. I mean, they don't look much on my scraggy old hands. <laughs> but I just thought I would show you those. I've got a couple, and I've got a couple more coming that I'll give away as presents. But isn't that unusual? And the youngsters absolutely adore them. And that's the sort that you have on your toes, I believe. Yeah, and it's, it's perfectly safe. It doesn't sort of pop off or anything. 
Although this one, it's a different design. Um, it's got too big because you told her I'd lost a bit of weight. So of course that slips down there. I mean, you know, it was nicely on there. But for that price, honestly. This is eBay. I just go, um, you know, scooting around to see what I can find. I'm going to take those off. Um, and that one. Because they're getting on my nerves. <laughs> um, yeah, my hands aren't so good today. So anything that is on them gets right. Um, right, let's, sorry, let's go back. So what you would do is you would put your piece of fabric, we'll see, it's that. Just imagine that's a piece of fabric. And then you would put your, see I'm trying to pull it too. You would put that on there, I can pull it off easily enough. So, and then you would use something like this. Can you see that? That's got a load of needles. In fact, this one broke off, but it doesn't matter for today. Um, it's got, what, two, four, six, eight needles in there. This is the protective cover. I had it on lock. That's that red spot. But for the, this purpose, um, I've now got it open because they're very, very, very sharp. And they're also like a fishing hook. You know, they've got barbs on them. Um, and it's meant to, um, like a fishing hook, it's meant to go in and not come out again easily. Um, oh, well, I'll tell you a little story. When I was nursing, um, when we went to, uh, this was on night duty, when um, we had our tea and dinner breaks, lunch breaks, um, I used to take my crocheting down with me and this is when I used to do the very very fine crochet you know sorry <laughs> there's my chime again and um, the crochet needle was equally fine you know it was almost like a needle and this one day I walked um, into the dining room and there's a set of chairs that we sit on after we've eaten, you know, just to talk to each other and do our little bit of craft work, whatever we're doing, knitting, sewing, etc. Um, and I just threw my crocheting onto the uh, chair, quite a low sort of easy chair, had my, my meal, whatever it was, came back so tired, you know, and absolutely plumped down full force onto, yes, I bet you know what's going to come in next, <laughs> onto the chair, sitting on my crocheting, and guess what went into my BTM? Yes, the crochet needle. <laughs> and it was, it was so fine, it was just like a needle. And of course, nobody could get it out, could they? So there was me going round the corner to the accident in an emergency part of the hospital to have it removed. And they did a tiny, tiny, tiny nick um, and opened the skin up slightly. Sorry, I'm being a bit yucky here, aren't I? Um, to remove the offending item. So never, you know, throw your things on chairs and then sit down on them, which is what I did. <laughs> Everybody had a, a, a lot of sympathy for me, but they also had a, a lot of giggles as well. Right, so those are those needles. So keep away from them, whatever you are thinking about or doing. Let me see if I can find one that I can actually show you. I don't know whether this no, I don't, it's not going to. It's not going to ha happen. Um, it's just too, too fine. OK. 
can you see the little barbs? Sorry, I'm going to come away again because I want to see where it is without looking through the viewfinder. They're so minute. I mean, there's bigger ones and smaller ones. Excuse me. Right, I'm going to have a try again. No. Can you see those barbs? You may not be able to. I certainly can't look into this viewfinder. But you can imagine that going into any part of your body, particularly your fingers and down your nails are very, very um, painful. That's a set that I'd obviously ordered from um, somewhere and it was a uh, pack of six and they come because you can actually use them like that but um, I prefer to use the uh, holders that come with it okay or that you can buy to pop them in so I have to look see what I'm doing uh, that is the one that's the multi one um, I have uh, a pen sort you see that I hope it's not glaring too much that's a pen style needle felting tool it has three needles for a quick finish it has two needles for creating lines and outlines and there's also one needle in there and that's for delicate work um, the needle length is adjustable as well and it shows you, just as I've got in front of me now, going into the uh, brush there. Many people use sponges, um, but I like the brush, I must admit. I have a smaller one here, very small, which I haven't, ha haven't used. I bought it for that reason, that you can see, hopefully you can see, without the glare, you see how you can just do designs and I thought that'd be nice on an ATC or um, on anything you know any um, piece of lace or what have you just to do a different design I mean look at that little, little bee I'd love to do that in felt um, you know on a delicate fabric so that's a very tiny one um, and it's got a refill uh, and attached to that is a, a three-ply wool, I believe. But again, you can use use uh, lots of other things. Can you see? That's how that works. The thread, how it goes down. That pumping action and the um, fabric. And then you'd come up and go back down again. And that's the effect you get. Okay. So there are there are literally dozens and dozens and dozens of different ways of um, doing your felting. Another one is, as I say, I just no. Wait a minute. Let me see if I can get this. No, I can't. I was wondering if I can get this off. I hold it like that. I can. Um, this is an, an applique mould, okay, so I got it uh, to do a rose, that's the tool, and excuse, ignore this little lot, you would just put that on there and use your needle tool, can you see, to do that. Now again, you know, it's something that I buy, <laughs> I do this all the time, I'm dreadful honestly, I see these new crafts and um, new uh, tools and what have you and I have to buy them um, but then I put them away and don't tackle whatever it is sometimes for years but I'm alright with that you know it's just um, people uh, in my family for instance think I'm crazy and I must admit I do get frustrated sometimes because I'd love to get at this for example but you know, I've just got so much more to do in my life. It can't happen. 
Okay, so that's that. I'll try and do one of those um, reasonably quickly and let you see uh, what happens. So, yes, the um, I'm doing this one-handed. Uh, so, can you see how the felt, the, sorry, the wool is now going in, down into the bottom. You'll get that effect on the bottom, excuse me. You see how it's gone down and pushed itself down and that's how your um, felting comes out. So that could be the beginning of a, a leaf or something like that. I say you can just pull that out so it's not as though I've ruined it or anything but I'll do that later okay so let me show you a few things that I can see in front of me that uh, I've done um, some people will have had one or two of these um, I've still got some more to send out and these are this is called felted soaps. That's one. Um, sorry about the crackling. I may have shown these before, I'm not 100% sure. Uh, here you go. And I love them, you know, to use. Um, it's just a soap. Again, you can get it on YouTube, put in felted soap, felted soap stones, all sorts of things, and they'll show you exactly how to do it. Um, it's, okay. And uh, you just get your soap, whichever uh, favourite you have, and wrap the soap. I'm showing you this because this is an example of what not to use because it's got sharp corners. This is the imperial leather. It's an old bar. Um, you know, it would be difficult to get every piece covered because you must cover every piece of the soap. So I would use something like that one. Reasonably small, not a great honk. Although you can use, you know, the large bath soap. Um, nothing to stop you doing that, it's just that it would take quite a while. Um, and all you do is literally place your felt over and wind it. Not this thick, I'm just, you know, showing you. You do layer upon layer and wind it over so that everything's covered. You do it one way, one time, and then the other way, another time. So everything is covered, even down to the corners there and then you literally um sorry let me get this right let me tell you the right way around um you put it in i use pop socks put it into um a stocking foot or the foot of um, a pop sock and literally you know keep sort of washing your hands or rubbing like that all the way around and what you're doing you're, you're making these pieces of felt that you've wound round bond together okay you have to do it quite um thoroughly because at first it looks bonded um and felted together but it isn't until you've really got them you know um put together like that. Um, this is just for decoration obviously we take this off use it as a hand soap or it's excellent for um, exfoliating because you're using the natural wool. The soap suds of your favourite soap come through. Um, as the soap um, 
is used, it goes smaller and smaller until you've got next to nothing. Just cut open a little edge along there, pop the last bit out, um, yeah, and you can go on till there's nothing there. And then use that same um, split to put the soap back in, a new bar of soap. And then gently again, felt, 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 felt. To close that hole up, you've got another piece. But honestly, they last forever. Um, I made these well before last Christmas. And I've still got one in the bathroom that I'm using now. You know, they do last a long time. I can't remember who I sent them to, and I'm not sure whether they've tried them. I mean, they're not everybody's cup of tea. So, as I say, with anything and everything that I send to people as reacts or whatever, I always say I'm not a bit um, precious about things. Um, I know that not everybody is going to love everything that I have. So I always say, please pass it on, give it to a charity shop, thrift store, whatever. You know, if you don't like it, require it, or anything else. I know several people who've done it, you know, and they don't feel bad about it because it's something I've always said. It doesn't bother me one iota. Okay, so that's the soap. Right, we're on 26 minutes now, so I'm going to go at this stage because there's going to be a few um, videos on this because I've got a few things to show you. Um, I'm not going very much into detail, which you've probably realised, because there's, you know, there's so much on YouTube and any other um, site, actually. There is just no need um, for me to do that. And I'd just be still talking to myself. Okay, let's put that there just to show you. It's a bit of a, a, a kit that I bought ages ago and done nothing with it, just to give you an idea. So I'll get off now and uh, get this uploaded, and I'll see you in video two. So I hope everybody has a lovely day. I'm not going to be very quick with these, so bear with me, please. Um, I might even do the odd one in between. No, I won't. If I start that, I shall be even more in a mess than I am now. So I'll see you, everybody, later on. I hope you'll come back and we'll show you some more interesting things. Well, I think it's interesting. It's not everybody's cup of tea, as I said before, but there you go. So bye-bye then. Take care. Oh, look at those old hands. Aren't they terrible? I've always had an old hand since I was a child. Ugh. Horrible. <laughs> okay. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.